hi everyone i hope you all are doing good so in this session i am going to explain about how to secure your swagger api definition okay so whenever you have integrated your web api with the swagger right so when you run your application from your development environment or any environment if swagger is enabled so what happens is basically it will list out all your api definitions okay it will list out all your api endpoints available in your system okay so in such scenarios and if your web apis are making use of some authentication and authorization mechanisms like it's it may be jwt bearer based okay it may be it may be making use of oauth based authentication it may be making use of open id connect in any scenario okay so just by just by having that AP, swagger api definition and if you trying to hit the request right it won't work because you need to pass your security token or the bearer token okay so how we achieve that so that's what today i'm going to show you okay even on your development machine or it may be on higher environments what additional configuration we need to do for our uh, swagger configuration okay so first thing so what we have to do is uh, when we call builder.services.add swagger generation when visual studio adds a default template it just adds it just makes an empty call to add swagger generation that's it that's why you are able to see everything over there and you can't see a option to authorize your apis before making any request okay so in order to provide that option of authorizing yourself so that you can put the token and then hit your api endpoints uh, from your swagger then you have to do this setup okay so builder.services.add swagger generation so as most of you are available uh, this particular uh, extension method okay is coming from our yeah dependency injection add swagger generation okay so it comes from the microsoft.extension.dependency injection and also uh, do remember that uh, we should have the project references or we should have imported the project libraries swashbuckle.aspnet core.swagger and swashbuckle.aspnet core.swagger gen nowadays uh, i think uh, it is it has been made part of the default part of our asp.net core web api projects itself so no need to worry about it much okay just for demonstration purpose i shown you these are the required libraries uh, we need in order to achieve this okay so so with that we make a call to add swagger generation method and uh, then we perform the setup basically okay this is nothing but your swagger gen options okay swagger generation app options basically okay so here you need to specify the open api security scheme okay so against which open api security scheme okay you want to authorize yourself and then generate a token and then uh, and then pass that particular token to your web apis okay do remember whatever uh, open api security scheme you are specifying here okay your web api should implement the same okay your web api should be implementing the same otherwise if you are implementing one security scheme for your controllers and all the configuration for the authorization and authentication is separate but you are creating a security scheme for some other protocol then it won't work okay so my scheme is bearer okay and the bearer format is jwt that is json web token okay then comes the name jwt authentication basically you can set any name over here so the header which you are going to set okay it will get this name jwt authentication so whatever uh, bearer format or the bearer value you are passing how it will be passed to your request okay this in parameter over here or this in property over here will specify okay in what place the header should be kept okay uh, sorry the bearer token should be kept so it's a required field the location of the api key okay so values the valid values are you can put it into query string which nobody does nowadays so usually it will be done in header or cookie okay so these are the three possible values and we always prefer to put into the authorization header okay so i am passing it into header itself okay and what is 
the name of the header query or quickie parameter to be used okay and the, what is the name of my header that is i have given as jwt authentication so you can give it as authorization no issue okay bearer format uh, a hint to the client to identify how the bearer token is formatted okay bearer tokens are usually generated by the authorization server so this information is primarily for documentation purpose okay so what is the bearer format i want jwt and my scheme which i already specified it's a required field the name of the http authorization scheme to be used in the authorization header as defined in rfc 7235 so it is bearer okay then type now security scheme type okay it is a required value and you have to specify the type of security scheme valued values are okay are you are you basically making use of a security scheme type of api key because some web apis are protected by api keys okay which is a constant key generated uh, on your uh, uh, provider side and it will be shared to you on your contract and you have to pass that api key in order to establish the communication or connection with your web apis okay second option is http which we are going to use so in case of http what we are going to do okay uh, my security scheme type is http based where the user will enter username password and generate a token for him once he successfully authenticates himself again same oauth2 also same you because we are using the jwt bearer scheme so in http oauth2 and open id connect we will end up in getting a bearer token okay description you can put any description but uh, i have specifically mentioned that please put only jwt bearer token on text box below okay so when we configure this thing you no know, guys so it will usually end up in giving an option to authorize and when you click on that authorize button it will open and pop up to ask you to enter a token so there you are not required to put the entire bearer token which you have extracted from your uh, browser consoles net uh, sorry your browser's network console okay or the any other way uh, using which you have generated the token so what you have to do you have to put that token without the word bearer okay so the it will be the responsibility of this particular swagger gen which will pass that token to your web api so no need to put that bearer over over here so reference important thing now what we have to do is we have to create a reference using open api reference so id is bearer based okay if you see the identifier of the reusable component of one particular reference type if external resource is present this is the part to that component after the hash slash okay so most of the time what they are specifying is this id should be your authentication scheme basically so that's why we have specified as bearer and type okay this must be present if open api reference dot external resource is not present so we don't have any external resource so we have to explicitly specify and the type is basically reference type dot security scheme which is six so if i go to this enumeration see here security schemas okay so six is for security schema and in the same way there are other uh, constants specified in the reference type schema responses parameters example request body header okay so my reference type will be security scheme which is six now setup dot add security definition okay on this options which basically uh, which basically called as swagger generation options we have, we need to specify add security definition and what is my secure how my security definition will be added look over here we have constructed a reference uh, object inside our open api security scheme right so we need to pass that id so jwt security scheme dot reference dot id and then the jwt security scheme which is this object itself where we have specified all our requirements for passing the token okay then setup dot add security requirement now you need to add the security requirement now you add in the previous step you added security definition okay now you need to add a security requirement which is open api security requirement again jwt security scheme for this open api security requirement you need to pass your jwt security scheme and then the second uh, parameter which i have sent as an array of empty strings but 
it can come up with other values also okay uh, okay so once all these things are done right okay so this is the first step which is addition of swagger generation options in order to pass token okay our jwt token now we have to tell our kestrel server or our web api application that it has to make use of that particular swagger generation uh, options we had specified so how we do that if app.environment is development then app.useswagger and then app.useswagger ui okay so now you are pretty much sure that your swagger definition has been safeguarded by passing a jwt token so you are basically uh, before using your uh, swagger endpoints anyway you are authenticating yourself and you are passing a valid token so if you want to extend this swagger uh, a tool or this swagger uh, api definition to be used as a tool in uh, your higher environment also like till qa or uh, uat environment just to do a api testing at this environment level then you can basically get rid of this condition of only ease development you can put for qa okay as well as whatever new environment you specify like stage or uat okay so you can put uh, additional conditions also you can put a or condition and you can specify yes i want it for qa oh, sorry and then uh, where did it go yeah ah, yes i want it for qa okay i want it for stage just like the way you specified over here like this app dot environment is environment and you can create the various other uh, environments also basically okay this is the built-in method provided by asp.net core but the equivalent we can create for other environments we have in our application okay so once you specify that and if you run the application now So this is how my API will look like now once a swagger is loaded, right? Okay. See, I can see the I can see my list of all the VPIs, their schemes, if there is any metadata, everything I can see over here. I think you are aware of this thing. So I don't want to concentrate much on that. The most important part as part of this session is this authorize. Now I have safeguarded my weather forecast uh, API by uh, using some authentication and authorization mechanism, say Azure AD. Okay, uh, Azure AD bearer scheme based uh, authentication and authorization. So in that case, what I have to do is I have to click on authorize. See guys, one pop up will come. Okay, now what you have to do, whatever text we had provided, right? Please put only JWT uh, bearer token on text box below without bearer. So you need to put your token over here and you have to click on authorization so i will enter some arbitrary value and i will say authorize okay see now it is keeping a reference basically it is holding the bearer token whatever you put right into this session now in this swagger session okay so now you can close it if you want to log out you will log out it will clear off all your bearer tokens which you had entered so now if you want to continue with this bearer token close this and now you can easily go ahead and hit your requests so if you say try it out okay and if you give if you execute no at present i have not configured any uh, authorization uh, authentication and authorization on my this is simple web api so i will get error but if you have properly configured a jwt or bearer token based any authorization scheme okay uh, like open id connect http okay so in such scenario if you have passed that token already by using this authorize option over here then if you click on execute it will automatically pass that bearer token to your request it will authenticate and it will return the response okay 